Szanowni Pani i Panowie, if I only had three minutes for my little presentation, I would probably restrict myself to stressing that shrinking of knowledge as an outcome of policy is not much likely, but perhaps as an outcome of bad science policy is much likely. A bad science policy is actually what we always have because we don't have enough tools, uh, no, they are sharp enough, no, they are numerous enough uh, to uh, secure the correct uh, science policy. So I am afraid uh, that we will consider just the case of the unavoidable bad uh, science policy. My basic assumption is that, of course, uh, science grows, uh, and uh, this is because of uh, people are producing science in large numbers uh, and also uh, that uh, because uh, um, this is impossible to lose what we know. Things we know are often forgotten or deleted as useless but it doesn't uh, pertain uh, to scientific knowledge and scientific knowledge, the way we take it uh, in modern society, is the core of any knowledge. So probably uh, resources of scientific knowledge cannot uh, shrink and this is the uh, duty of the information worker to make it uh, grow. On the other hand, we have to ask ourselves, uh, how, how do we consider uh, resources of knowledge? We can think it's just virtual and uh, this is uh, the sum of scientific statements or prob probably just the sum of scientific answers. And then the uh, resources created uh, can exist forever and they will certainly will but they can become inaccessible because of some process but when we consider scientific statements as a social creation as the social aspect of it uh, we see uh, that uh, the resources can be deformed or they can fall into oblivion or something can happen uh, to them because they are susceptible to social change. And this process can affect even what is meant in scientific statements. Uh, the knowledge we create, I am sorry I forgot about slides. So this is the slide number two which is very correctly pointing to the library as the place where you can find out and which makes your accumulated knowledge last forever. And this are my two attitudes to scientific statements, the virtual and the social one. And the created knowledge is probably not automatically accessible. Let us take two cases. Uh, Dr. Elsman Nott conceived this famous idea of so-called fecal transplantation, which is really something very important in medicine now, or at least this is what I read in the popular press, of course, because I don't read myself the scientific medical press. So she conceived that idea, but she would not had she discovered a paper uh, in journal titled Surgery and published in 1958. And the second case study is the uh, ethnology or cultural anthropology scene uh, which I observe in Poland. It's so interdisciplinary now. It's history, languages, geography, uh, art history, theology, philosophy. And the reviewers uh, of papers are never satisfied. 
they always complained that the author has not retrieved uh, all the uh, expected uh, sources and uh, had she or he uh, retrieved them, uh, she would not be able to understand them, she would not be able to fully exploit them uh, because she or he is not an expert uh, in this uh, uh, special field. So we request uh, research to be interdisciplinary, uh, to, be, to be really interdisciplinary, and then uh, we question it because uh, the researcher is not competent enough uh, to cover uh, various fields. Uh, the answer can be that we probably have librarians, have information workers, uh, just to uh, cope with that. Uh, but we also uh, have to be aware of the limitations of scientific uh, information. Uh, we inform precisely only when we have uh, a very uh, perfected terminology and also when we have 100% uh, uh, digitization. Uniform terminology and 100% uh, digital uh, format uh, for knowledge we intend to access seem the only uh, seem the conditions for uh, any reference service uh, to uh, work and really provide uh, solutions. On the other hand, uh, really innovative work always uh, requires uh, uh, um, digging out resources which are not uh, obvious. An innovative author or an innovative team always work uh, all alone. A science policy, uh, a science policy uh, which is uh, necessarily uh, directed towards digitization and directed towards uh, uniform terminology uh, uh, leaves out large areas of excluded, uh, excluded knowledge and excluded uh, communities. Uh, this is a, a very complex uh, process, uh, but I believe that many resources of print-only knowledge are not bibliographically supported and thus are not accessible for the younger generation uh, of scholars, for instance. And this is just an example of the industry which grew up in, uh, in the world uh, of scientific information and uh, uh, this makes uh, uh, it very difficult for us to approach knowledge directly. It's always mediated by some large apparatus. We heard today about solutions. A scholar needs answers. This is the content of scientific statements. But we instead tend to receive solutions provided by such large organizations with their technological uh, apparatus. Mm, we can consider uh, science as text and indicators, and indicators uh, are the value uh, um, um, of the text. Uh, as an author, you are evaluated for how you are cited, but not how do you cite. So probably uh, this citing culture makes it uh, very difficult to access all of the knowledge and to evaluate all the aspects of uh, research. Uh, and obvious examples are here what was referred to as mutual favors, uh, mutual favors uh, in uh, citing journals. So, at least excessive journal self-citations. Uh, there are many more processes like this. Uh, of course, uh, we can use the digital environment to uh, um, employ crowdsourcing for reviewing forthcoming papers. 
but a forthcoming paper were viewed by a crowd which can conclude in a very objective evaluation of a paper uh, provides a new problem uh, for, the re uh, for the information worker. Namely, the information worker has to admit it is on the internet, but is it published? Look, on this slide below, I have an example of a recently evaluated paper which was just an article in press, and this is the policy of Elsevier. Is it published or is it not? As a person responsible for providing accurate data to the uh, uh, authorities of my school, I was all in doubt, because it is published. It is definitely published, but Elsevier, as the publisher, stresses that this paper is subject to change. It is not the final version yet. As long as we see the label, article in press, I cannot uh, admit to the rector of my university that this is the final version. And if it changes, what data will I eventually supply to the national bibliography of scientific texts uh, which is emerging uh, in uh, Poland? All those doubts, doubts like this and the other doubts, are perfectly, ex uh, perfectly expressed in this Beyond Bibliometrics uh, 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 book, uh, a highly uh, recommended uh, work, but I will not have time to uh, elaborate uh, on it now. Uh, so uh, we have to be very, very attentive to modern uh, publication practices. A scientific text is basically a paper in a journal. Uh, scholars receive points uh, or grades for publishing, so let's publish papers. But there are many consequences of it. Uh, individual authors become very specialized and they never cover a larger field. Uh, teamwork is obvious, but who is responsible for um, bringing the pieces all together? We do have an embedded librarian in scientific teams, but do we have an embedded novelist to provide a convincing narration? Uh, growingly, in uh, natural science, we have a very conventional narration uh, imposed by editors uh, on uh, authors, uh, we have step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five is always discussion, and the step six is always the conclusion. Uh, but in social science, and especially human humanities, we have increasingly a narration like in a novel, a narration like in fiction. Uh, this is at least uh, what uh, many uh, humanists uh, admit uh, now uh, in my country, this is so-called post-modern humanities. Also we have the inflation of uh, 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 journals, we have uh, easily accessible uh, journals and we can suspect that some branch of science will develop in those journals which will not necessarily be compatible with science uh, uh, practiced and announced in highly cited journals, in impact factor journals, in uh, so to say regular uh, journals. Uh, also uh, we have so many threats, undertakings, methodologies and schools in uh, scientific research now uh, that uh, the chance for authors to cite themselves, to know, to encompass uh, all the publications is growing and no reference service can uh, uphold its unity. Uh, eventually, uh, there is a lot of duplication both in selection of topics uh, and uh, in uh, uh, selection of projects. Uh, modern, uh, yes, 
modern uh, publication practice uh, uh, are basically the focus of the clerk, or perhaps a politician, or something in between, which is Chinovnik, which is busy with assessing the productivity uh, of the author. Also, secondly, the scholar searching for information. Uh, the natural environment for scientific research was and still is the general public. But who's mediating between the scholar and the general public now? Probably some popular writers, probably authors of handbooks in schools, corporations and agencies uh, seeking applications, like in, uh, in, in uh, uh, drugs, in energy, in weapons, in climate, in uh, environmental studies, uh, certainly educational uh, authorities in any country, and uh, there is a question to ask at last, uh, does literature and film disseminate scientific culture? We will no longer have Jules Verne, uh, we will probably never again have Stanislav uh, Lem. Uh, we mostly have very popular fiction, which is only stressing various aspects, very selected aspects of a scientific uh, achievement uh, of today. Also, let's uh, take a look at the scientific knowledge in school. Uh, it started in the 19th century with education, with the story of the nation and how it originated. But now, in young democracies, uh, it is the party which is in power, which decides uh, what is taught uh, at school and what is narrated uh, to the younger generations. Uh, the uh, ideological bias is possible even uh, in the field of natural science because, for instance, uh, environmental science, uh, evolution science, uh, gender studies are very susceptible to uh, uh, ideological impact. Also, modern uh, research practice it goes uh, into many uh, directions uh, which do not seem compatible. Uh, the bookstores tell you, buy the book online. Uh, what you really need is in the book. Uh, forget articles, forget raw data. On the other hand, the scientific, industry, scientific, uh, scientific information industry is mediating between the scholar and the uh, knowledge resources and is stressing uh, journals and probably the book contents is uh, put aside on some margin of fringe. Uh, indexes, databases, uh, reviewer papers, uh, services, archives, repositories, digital libraries, we look for more than we are able to read. Uh, we uh, tend to read summaries and not full text, forget the full data. The open access is again flooding us with information. We can think we have everything, but we don't train our own criticism uh, and we uh, seldom know uh, what uh, sources are reliable. Again, we do not have proper tools towards that uh, purpose. Uh, citizen science, one more promise of the 21st century, certainly alters, certainly modifies the uh, purpose uh, and the result uh, of uh, any uh, research uh, project. And when we take uh, into consideration advanced uh, studies, uh, we know how much money uh, does it take and we know that if there is much money invested there has to be a result. Therefore, even in science, even in nature, we read things which are not confirmed later uh, by independent research. 
they seemed very reliable, but they were not. They just had to be published because they costed uh, uh, such uh, mm, uh, impressive uh, amount uh, of funding. Uh, any authority conducting uh, science policy has a very poor choice between supporting selected topics or just supporting political friends. I do not think it is avoidable even in uh, democracy without uh, qualifiers. So are we doomed? Will we have less and less scientific knowledge in the future? Mm, uh, of course, uh, uh, no one knows. We just see uh, that the knowledge is changing and that the disruptive technology of digitization and uh, politically driven uh, scientific information infrastructure is cutting us off from the resources of the former knowledge. Uh, so the basic idea of modern science, uh, which is we are located on the shoulders of giants, this is what makes us see further than those before us. This uh, uh, basic assumption is probably no longer valid. We are unable to use those previous scholars uh, as our giants. We don't know them, or we don't need them, or we think uh, that uh, there is no use in studying their work. Uh, we have very, very extensive apparatus of uh, information science and it is of course uh, costly, so it has to be politically uh, uh, controlled, uh, which gets uh, both ideology and economy heavily involved. Uh, there is no mediation of humanists, there is no mediation of people with general knowledge, to provide directions to the general society and to make it understand uh, what uh, does the science uh, tell us uh, about the world. Uh, probably, again, sorry for not... Why don't you shout at me when I forget about slides? This was a previous one, actually. But this is a current, uh, uh, the current one, when I think that uh, we do need mediation of people who'd be able to encompass all the field of uh, knowledge, uh, including, and first of all, uh, scientific knowledge. Probably popular culture and new mythologies uh, emerging on the field of popular culture are competitive uh, for science and make, uh, mm, cause it uh, taking a blow. So, uh, it is not a conclusion, it is just a question. Sorry. Yes that uh, we have two futures before science, before science supported and served by scientific information. And one is like this, that by 2050 it will heavily shrink whatever ways of measurement we will adopt. And the second possibility is that it will substantially grow, but it will be to some extent the same science and the continuity will be preserved and to some extent it will be just different science in terms of different contents and in terms of just different answers given, given to uh, scientific questions. Thank you very much for your attention and this Diakujemo means not only myself but also my translator into Ukraine. Thank you.